Good morning and welcome to St. Matthias. Our opening hymn is He is Risen. Thank you. 
Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show, show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, and be seated for the first reading. Our first reading is taken from the 8th chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning at the 6th verse. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent forth the raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth, and he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove. She did not return to him anymore. In the six in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth had dried out. Then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living, every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is a sign of the covenant that I made between you, me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks unto the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, and among the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who have pleasure in them. His work is worthy to be praised and held in honor, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his marvelous works to be had in remembrance. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He has given food to those who fear him, he shall ever be mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works, that he may give them a heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are true. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who live accordingly. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from the first chapter of the first epistle of St. Peter, beginning at the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes through its tested, though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. And he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the marks of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe you. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So spirit come, let's drink in every stride. Give grace, Lord, Christ of the Son. 
disciples were for fear of the Jews. They were fearful when they, they ran and scattered. And now that Jesus has been crucified and buried, they come back together, lock themselves in the room. Where was Thomas? Why were they all there and Thomas not? Was he making a grocery run? Maybe he was looking for paper goods in the midst of the crisis. Was he working? Was he praying? Was he reading scripture. Maybe he was studying the old prophecies to understand what had happened. Maybe he was assisting the poor and the needy. We don't know why, but we do know this. He missed seeing Jesus that day. He missed the renewal of life found in the resurrection and in that moment as Jesus breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Compare that to the seventh verse in the second chapter of Genesis. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. The breath of new life. The resurrection born again. Now giving new life to them. These disciples as he joined them in this room that was locked and established the church established the church in that moment, giving authority to his disciples. Verse 23 saying, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. And Thomas missed it all. Thomas missed it all. And we don't know why. And I want to know why. But what we do know is we know how he responded. We know very clearly how he responded. He responded with disbelief when he came back in. And again, I'm going to ask Thomas, why the disbelief? Maybe it was the emotional roller coaster he had suffered as three years of ministry of Jesus, then seeing his Lord put on a cross, put in a tomb. Maybe it was anger. Maybe it was fear. Maybe it was confusion. Or maybe he just simply felt left out that Jesus had come with everybody else there, not him. Again, we don't know why. It could have been all of those things. It could have been none of those things. But we do know he was not there. We do know he answered in disbelief when he was told. He says in verse 25, and you almost have to point your finger when you read it, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of his nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. So I say with a little bit of gruff. And again, I want to ask Thomas a question. Thomas, how do you know that detail? How do you know the detail? Because, again, we don't know if Thomas for sure saw Jesus on the cross or placed in the tomb. But we do know from Matthew and Mark's gospel that when Jesus was arrested, all the disciples scattered. 
And we know they were afraid then. We know they're afraid now. We only have a record of John being at the cross, standing beside the mother of Jesus. We have a record of Mary Magdalene being there, Mary, the wife of Clopas. We have a record of some of the other people that are there found in the other gospel readings, but none of them, none of them say the disciples were there. We know that Jesus' body was taken and entombed by Joseph of Arimathea. John tells us that Nicodemus participated. But again, none of the disciples. So if Thomas was not a witness to this, then the death of Jesus is hearsay, something he has been told and believed. The details of hearsay, something he's been told and chose to believe. Now, he might have assumed a crucified individual would have holes in their hands and in their feet. But what about the wound in the side? He had to be told what had happened. It seems to me that Thomas has believed the hard part, one part, but not the other. From the same people, under the same circumstances. He refused to believe this truth that Jesus has come that was told to him by his friends, his fellow believers, his trustworthy companions. But Jesus would return, it says eight days later, one week later, the beginning of the next week, the very beginning of the next week, Jesus comes again under the same circumstances where they're in the room and the door is locked. Jesus comes in. This time Thomas is there. You know what Jesus says to him? You know what Jesus says to him? Verse 27, he says, Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And what Jesus says is, well, it's paramount. There's interesting elements to this exchange. Beyond the obvious, which Jesus says, I am here in the flesh. See my wounds. I did die. I was wounded, and yet I live in the flesh. But even more so, Jesus responds to Thomas's commands or disbelief. He says, I will not believe if, right? Jesus is addressing the very words that Thomas delivered in that room to the disciples a week earlier. And it's a reminder for us and for him, Jesus heard him. Jesus hears us. He hears us now, just like he heard Thomas then in that cry. These two amazing truths, Jesus is resurrected in body from the dead. And he is revealed to many, John reminds us, but also we're reminded more specifically he hears the cry of the heart of his people. When Thomas looks at him, verse 29, and says, or he, when Jesus addressed Thomas in verse 29, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Jesus is telling him, I heard you. I heard you say these things and I have come to you. Believe. That I am here, believe that I hear your cry, your anger, your confusion, your anxiety, your struggles, your worries, all of those things. Jesus is risen and he lives in all that truth being digested by Thomas. In that moment, he looks to Jesus and says, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God, my Lord, whom I surrender to, whom I obey, who I follow, who I worship. My God, who created me and who has given me life, who always was, who is, and forever will be. What a reminder. And I want to point out one more thing. Jesus met Thomas in the room. He met Thomas in the room with the others. Now I want to ask you a question. When the gospel is read, where are you? Where are you? Are you looking in the window 
are at the door observing what is going on. Because when Thomas cried outside of the room, Jesus did not come. Jesus came to him specifically under his own terms. Thomas surrendered. He cried out. And he met the living God standing before him, risen from the dead in the room. If you're standing outside of the room, I beg you, come in the room. Come into the room. Let go of the anxiety. Let go of the worry. Let go of the doubt. Let go of all the trouble. Come into the room and cry out to the Lord. He will hear you and he will meet you. Amen. And now as you are able, please stand with us as we can as we join our voices with Christians around the world this day and confess what we believe with the words found in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us then and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity in godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially our Archbishop Holy Beach, our Bishop Mark Lawrence, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially our president, our governor, and mayors, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions to the will for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those that we call out aloud or in the silence of our hearts.
and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. At this time, I welcome you to offer your petitions and thanksgivings as, be, as may be most fitting at this time. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy service departed this life and thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Matthias and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and our love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God without remedying. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. My last Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, say, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who in hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come to me. O oh, ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is the true saying worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. As you are able, please stand with me. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with and with thy spirit. I grant you in the peace of God. May peace be with you. Our offertory hymn is Come Thou Almighty King.
in this time of worship. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And with us here. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb, which was offered for us and hath taken away the sin of the world who by his death had destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and singing. Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, 
we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy to our manifold sins to offer unto the any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our value and duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, Almighty world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, for thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
please join with me in the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost thou say to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And thus assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasseth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Our closing hymn is Christ whose glory fills the skies.